So I thought it'd be fun to do a build for each of the starry forms, specifically targeting their strength. So we have Chalice, we have Dragon, and we have Archer. This one is going to be all about playing with the Chalice. So right off the bat, we're going to want our two levels into Druid. Druid two levels is just jam-packed with power, especially if you're a Star's Druid, because you get those extra guiding bolts. They're basically like cantrips for you, but they're super powered cantrips. They're awesome. And we're going to get to be using our Chalice right away. What does the Chalice do for us? Well, it helps us be a better healer. When we use a healing spell, we can target somebody, either our ourselves or somebody within 30 feet of us and heal them a d8 plus our wisdom modifier so it's basically like a ranged cure wound so we can get a lot of value out of simple spells like healing word so let's just take a moment to examine this value if you took healing word something you're probably going to be casting anyways you're basically upcasting healing word to second or even third level and not only that you can target two people so you can be more efficient with your healing so this takes you from being a just emergency pickup heal someone to somebody who can actually be a healer because our starry form healing can only happen to a target within 30 feet of us we're going to want to be tangled into the fight at least midliners. Now, while we want to play up close, druids do remove some of our armor. So our potential armor, if we have three dexterity, for example, is going to be studded leather armor with a shield, which gets us to about 17 AC. And that's around what I'd expect with this character. And since we're tangled up into the fights, I want to be a goliath. A goliath is going to help us reduce the amount of damage without burning our action economy too heavily. So that's going to make us more of a frontliner. Now, because we don't have dark vision, this is going to be a good excuse to pick up a uh, some sort of light cantrip to help us out throughout. Out. And our other cantrip can be shillelagh, so we can have a, our shield and we can have a wisdom-based attack with our stick. Now, right after we get those two levels in Druid, we're done with Druid. We've got everything we want out of this Druid. We're going to now bounce over to Cleric. Now, we have two routes here, and this is a, the big interesting choice. We can either go the Life Domain Cleric and be super focused on healing, getting even more healing out of our healing, become a crazy efficient healer, or we can take the Order Domain Cleric. The Order Domain Cleric, since we're going to be probably using healing spells, we can weaponize our healing spells by weaponizing our own allies reactions. Now this choice is going to be a personal preference, but it also matters a lot on your team composition. If you have a rogue, they're going to love the order domain cleric. If you have a wizard, they're going to think nothing of the order domain cleric and they would prefer the life domain cleric. So weigh out your team and decide which one is better for your team. And you get to wait till third level before making that choice. So you get to experience your team a bit. Now from there, we're going to want to continue going into cleric. The reason why is cleric has more powerhouse healing spells. Those spells include things like aura vitality, mass cure wounds, Mass Healing Word, awesome spells for healing. A spell like Aura of Vitality, for example, is going to be really good residual healing, but something you have to note about Aura of Vitality is when you first cast it, you can use your Starry Form healing, but each subsequent use of it does not trigger that healing. However, I would enjoy the playstyle of setting up Aura of Vitality, being able to heal people as a bonus action whenever I want, getting the Starry Form healing off right away. Then I can do things like Mass Cure Wounds, do Burst Healing whenever required. So we are a really good Burst Healer as well as a Continual Healer. We hit both of those notes. Something else to consider is we can heal our teammates and heal ourselves using our chalice at the exact same time. So it makes us even more of a frontliner because we can self-sustain. One of the things I really like about this character is we are the battle healer. I think there's something to be said that there's, you know, the support that stands in the back and avoids all combat. And then there's the support who gets in and mixes into the combat. For a lot of people, that's going to be a more fun way to play support. And this character really delivers on that. We're going to be toe to toe with the enemies, but we can do these crazy burst or sustain heals. We can mix it in with high damage. We're a cleric. We can still do things like spirit guardians. So keep that in the back pocket. As far as our mid-range options go, we do have our cleric cantrips and our druid cantrips that can go out to 60 feet. So we do have consistent midline damage. As far as our far range damage, we're really relying on guiding bolt to hit that 120 feet. But past that, ranged combat is going to be one of our weaknesses. As far as our defenses go, we have decent AC, not crazy, decent, but our health pool can go quite a long ways and our saves are fantastic. For me, what stands out about this character is that not only are you the healer of all healers, but you can also be a battle healer. Those two things coming together are really awesome. But what I want to hear from you guys is what you would do with your chalice build. Can't wait to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comments down below. Now, you may not know that this video was actually released to our patrons a while ago. If you want the benefit of seeing our videos early and other benefits, consider becoming one of our patrons and supporting the channel. We'd really appreciate it. All right, guys, that's it. We love you. See you later. Bye.